uh, and, you know, I had talked about these kind of different themes that were important to me, and for instance, this first series is really the series about mourning. Um, and I thought a lot about how, because of who he was, and because of the incredible wealth and fame that surrounded him, even as he was broke, the idea of wealth was still very powerful around him. Um, I just thought about, like, well, who can really mourn him in a really clean, pure way? And it occurred to me that probably his children can, and the, the animals in the zoo can as well. And so the, the animals become these kind of figures of mourning to me, uh, uh, the ones who can really cleanly be sad and, and sorrowful, because what they wanted from me was just probably his love and his occasional you know, companionship, and uh, that was probably a rarity in his life. And so this is kind of my mourning wall, I guess, the wailing wall. <laughs> um, and uh, this is all about the kind of myth-making, which, as I said, he was very much engaged in, his, in, in the mythology of Michael Jackson. He was very much invested in this idea of, of his own kind of image. Um, if you, I don't know if you've ever seen, a, there's a, there was a big spread a couple of years ago, an architectural digest of his house. And, you know, his home looks exactly like the home that you would expect a 13-year-old boy with $25 million to get. It's exactly that. <laughs> it's these paintings of himself dressed as a knight with his mighty glowing sword, and there's a poem behind that says, I am the light, I am the truth, I am just this incredible, evil, maniacal, childish kind of thing. He was very involved with his own myth-making, and so I felt like I wanted to throw a new kind of myth into the mix uh, as a way of understanding, because we make myths as a way of, of trying to understand what we don't quite get. And so I was interested in creating a myth that would help me bridge this gap of understanding. And, and, uh, and the idea behind the myth is um, somebody in an offhanded way once said, well, what if he was a, a castrato, you know, one of these people who had been castrated uh, in the 18th and 17th century in Italy, the, the Vatican uh, was castrating these boys to, to help them retain this pure, high voice for their choirs. And, um, so I started studying these, these castrados, and um, it was amazing because the, the castrados were the rock stars of their age. They were total, the best of them were these massively famous international stars that commanded incredible amounts of money to make appearances. Major composers were, you know, falling over each other trying to get them to agree to sing their songs. Women were absolutely mad about these guys because they had this huge power to project, uh, you know, they had this big lungs and this kind of male body, adult male body, uh, combined with a voice like a woman's. And so it was a really powerful experience. And these women would swoon and they would be completely in love with these, these, these men. And they were considered to be a kind of a different gender as well um, because they had their testicles cut off. And so all of it just started to feel like, ooh, that's Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of the myth making. And this is all about, this wall is, to me, on that theme of, of seeing and ca can we see? How, how do we see? through through all of this. Um, so that's just some, some of the ideas that I've